Uh, my name is Ian Holmes, and uh, with me today is my, my glamorous assistant, Tom Armitage. We're part of the Adena Service, Geoservices support team, and we're going to be looking at urban map data in AutoCAD. So after this webinar, you'll get an email, um, and in it will be links to a recording of this, this particular webinar, which will be hosted on YouTube, uh, links to the PowerPoint slides that we're going to look at, and like I said before, any questions and answers that uh, come in today, you'll get a transcript of all of them. We'll put them online as well, so you get a link to those. And we'll also send you a very short feedback form. Any feedback is always greatly appreciated to help us develop these webinars for future. Okay, so we're basically going to cover three things today. So which data sets are available in CAD format and Digimap, how to access that data, how to download it through the service, and also how to use that data in some of the different AutoCAD products. So first thing we're going to do is run a quick poll just to find out which of those particular topics uh, is of most interest to you. So if I just launch the poll, there we go. You should see the poll on your screen now. If you could just tick uh, the, 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 thing that, the topic that you're most interested today, that would be really useful. Share the results so you can see them. So uh, most people are interested in how to use the data in AutoCAD and the uh, second one, uh, what data is available. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much for completing that. Uh, just jump back to our slides. Okay, so in terms of the data that's available in the service, we've got it. I've got it broken down here into three separate categories. The first one here is vector data sets, and these are all the vector data sets that are available in Digimap. We've got a whole range of data. Um, the master map topography layer is the most detailed data available from Ordnance Survey, so that's that's really good. Um, uh, for uh, studies using small areas. So if you need a detailed study map for this, then the uh, master map topography layers the data you want to go for. And then right down to strategy and Meridian 2, they're less detailed, so suitable for sort of regional studies. Um, and these are all the ones that are available in CAD format. So you'll see on the right-hand side there that column, it lists the CAD formats that we publish these in. There are lots of other data sets available in Digimap, but they're not all available in CAD formats. But these are the ones that are, are served up in native CAD formats. The link on that page will take you to a, a help page on our, on our help system, which lists all the data sets and all the different formats that each one's available in. So we're going to look at um, some of these in a bit more detail in a few minutes. Uh, I'll go through each one in a little bit more detail and show you some live data in uh, some of the CAD software. So the first one I want to talk about is the master map topography layer. Like I say, this is the most detailed mapping available from, from, great, from the Ordnance Survey. Uh, it's available for the whole country. It's a fully polygonized data set, and it includes details of what's physically there on the ground. So they're only interested in what's actually on the ground, if it's a building or a road. They're not interested in what type of building it is or what type of road it is. So it doesn't contain details on if it's an A road, a B road, a minor road, or if it's a commercial or residential building. It's just concerned with mapping the physical features on the ground. So it's good for large-scale projects, so small areas, basically. If you're doing a, a model for a small area in an urban environment, and this is a data set that you want to take, it's the most detail that's available. And the last bullet point there says that we, we provide it in two flavors, so two different color schemes. One's the full color one, which is what's screen grabbed on that slide there. Uh, and the second one is a, is a line work version, or we call it plan style. And I'll show you how to get those out of the system. The second data set that's probably useful for architecture and CAD students is the building height attribute data set. Now, this is still an alpha release. Again, it's produced by Ordnance Survey. It is basically the buildings out of master map, the master map topography layer data set that have been provided with attributes that give their height information, so their height above the surface. Uh, and we provide that as an extruded 3D DWG data set. Um, like I say, it's an alpha data set, so at the moment there is no guarantee that it's, it's free from errors. But in the future, uh, Ordnance Survey are going to incorporate this into the master map topography layer, so it will become part of that particular product. And at the moment, given it's a, an alpha release, it, it does not complete coverage for the whole country. Uh, as it says there in the bullet points, it's currently only the major towns and cities, and there's a link to the official page on the Ordnance Survey website that shows the coverage, the distribution of that. We do also have the same distribution included in the Digimap data download facility, and I'll show you that when we go through the system. Uh, and this was last updated in December 2014. So at the moment, it's, it's not been updated for, uh, for over two years. But I uh, believe Ordnance Survey are still working on it, and it will be incorporated into MasterMap very shortly. 
So these are the attributes that building height uh, data set provides. Um, you've got different, you've got one height value, which is the absolute height uh, above sea level. And then you've got two relative heights. So that's sort of height to the eaves and the height to the, the maximum height, of, in this case, the chimney stack. And then they've also calculated, um, sorry, there's the absolute heights of those, and they've also calculated the relative heights of those from the ground. We'll come back to that when we look at the actual data set. Okay, the next vector data set I want to mention is vector map local. This is uh, slightly less detailed. It's designed for display at around 1 to 10,000 scale, and it's good for smaller scale projects, so town level projects. So if you've got a town level project, this is a really good data set to use. Here we're looking at uh, somewhere in the Lake District, somewhere around Ambleside, um, and you can see it's, uh, it's still got quite a lot of detail with it, and it does include contour information on spot heights. But this is provided as a 2D data set. It's not a heighted data set. Uh, but we'll come on to the different heighted data sets available uh, in a minute, which is this next category. So there are a number of different terrain data sets that you can get from, from Digimap. Um, they fall broadly into two main products released by London Survey. We've got the Terrain 5 products and the Terrain 50 products. And each one of those has a DTM, a digital terrain model, and a contour variant. And these are the different ones that are available. Terrain 50 Contours is shown in grey there because it's not actually released in a native CAD format. But you can uh, import GML into AutoCAD Map 3D. The two bottom products, Landform Profile and Panorama, they're available in DXF format, which can be read by most CAD applications. But they've actually been withdrawn by Online Survey and are no longer updated. So we would recommend taking Terrain 5 or Terrain 50 because these are, are more detailed and kept up to date. So in terms of the different types, I said you've got a digital terrain model, which is uh, the abbreviation of DTM. So that forms a, it's a raster data set. It, it basically forms a surface that you can see in the top screen grab there. And the second version is the contours, which is the lines that you'll be familiar with from Ordnance than survey uh, navigation maps. The difference between terrain 5 and terrain 50 is one of detail. So terrain 5 is more detailed. Contours have a 5 meter interval and the DTM has a 5 meter cell size. So in 50, the contours are at 50 meters, and the DTM has a 50 meter cell size. So that's the difference between those. So for small areas, take terrain 5, because that's the most detailed data you can get, and it gives a really nice, accurate representation of the ground surface. Finally, the third category of data you can get from Digimap is uh, backdrop mapping. And the vast majority of this is available in TIFF format, uh, with the exception of the aerial imagery. So there's lots of different uh, TIFF data sets available. Again, these range in scale. So we've got the um, large scale data at the top there, master map topography in the uh, raster version. Um, and then the small scale data, the one on the vector map district, which for more sort of local or regional scale, scale studies. In terms of the aerial imagery, this is a new uh, collection that has just come online back in October. We launched it last year. Um, we've had good uptake of this so far. That's got 25 centimeter resolution aerial imagery across the whole country, provided by Get Mapping. Uh, that's in JPEG format, and certainly some CAD applications can use this. I'll show you a quick uh, example at the end of this webinar where we drape that over a terrain surface to give you a nice 3D model in uh, Autodesk's InfraWorks product. Um, so that's included there. Again, the, the link at the bottom of that page takes you to the formats page for all of the data sets available in Digimap. Okay, so yeah, here's a, here's a sort of screen grab of the 1 to 25,000 color raster. We've got 10 different products available. Um, yeah, the largest scale is master map topography, and the smallest scale is mini scale at 1 to 1 million. And these can all be used in, uh, in CAD by draping over the top. Here's a quick screen grab of the aerial imagery. So this is, like I say, it's a 25 centimeter aerial imagery from Get Mapping. It's in JPEG format. Uh, we do get annual updates to it, so the vast majority of the data at the moment is from 2011 onwards, but we're currently processing uh, a large proportion of data for 2015, which will be in the service very soon. On top of here, we've actually laid the building outlines from master map topography layer, so you can see how accurately that the imagery follows the outlines of the buildings. We do keep the data up to date in Digimap. We, we're permanently updating the data. We get data releases from London Survey all the time throughout the year, and we publish a help page on our system uh, that lists when it was last updated in Digimap and the Ordnance Survey publication date. And we try and keep the data as up-to-date as possible. 
Um, previous versions of data are also available, so if you wanted to get data for a particular point in time, you can go back and download the, the data that's relevant for you. Okay, so the second part of this webinar is just to have a quick look at how you actually get hold of the data. So rather than uh, doing PowerPoint, I'm actually going to go flip into Digimap. So here we are in the Digimap homepage. I've logged in at the moment. Most of the data we're looking at today is in the Ordnance Survey collection, apart from the aerial imagery, which comes into the aerial collection down here. So I'm going to go into the Ordnance Survey data download application. And anybody that's familiar with data download will know that it's, it's a three-step process. You basically zoom or browse or search or pan to your location of interest. So I'm just going to zoom in on Edinburgh Castle, which is here in the middle of my screen. Here's Edinburgh Castle. The second step is to choose your area. So I want data for Edinburgh Castle. And then the third step uh, is to choose the data that you're interested in. Sorry, the second step is to choose the data you're interested in. Uh, so if I want master map topography data, I'll choose that. I might want some building height data as well. <coughs> on the and a terrain surface to put it on so i'll take the terrain 5 dtm if you're not sure about the different data sets each one has a little info window and if you click on this a little window will pop up and it tells you what formats it's produced in and you can also see the availability of the data so when i mentioned about master map building height i choose the info window it's it's got the availability is not national at the moment if I turn on this availability grid for this, you can also turn it on through the, the panel on the right-hand side. If I now zoom out a little bit, what's happened now is the system has drawn a grid over the top of the map. So I had zoomed into Edinburgh here, and the little grid here shows you where the master map topography data is available for, for the whole country. If I scroll down the country a bit, and you'll see where it's available for. So if you're interested in some data, you're doing a study somewhere in an area, you can check this to see if the data is actually available. Things like master map topography layer and terrain 5 DTM, these are national coverages, so you can get data for the whole country. But things like building heights, which is still an alpha product, it's not got coverage for the whole country. So you can use the little availability grid there to see where that data is available for. So I'll just zoom back in. Okay, and turn that off. So having chosen my area and chosen my products, I then add them to the basket. When you've got the products in your basket, you can choose various things. You've got a few options here. You can choose the version. So when I said that we have older versions of data available, by default, you'll be presented with the most recent data that's in the system. So December 2016 in this case. But if you are in a previous version, you can select it using the dropdown. I'll leave it selected with December. And different uh, products have different availability. So you see Building Heights is only available for December 2014. We had a previous version, but because it's still an alpha release, we removed the previous version and just make the latest one available. The second column here is the format. This is really important um, when you're downloading the data that you take the right format, because some applications can't read different formats of data. And um, we produce the different data sets in a number of different formats and it is dependent on what that data set is as to what format it's produced in. Mostly for CAD applications you'll want to take the data in something called DWG which is a drawing format or DXF which is an interchange format. Um, so I'll choose DWG for my building heights and my topography data. For the terrain data CAD applications can read in ASCII data so I'll take it in ASCII format. The final option I was going to mention here today is this theme option. You'll see for this topography layer, we've got the option of choosing a standard or a plan theme. This goes back to what I said before about we produce the master map topography data in two flavors. One is a full color version, and the second one is an outline or drawing style. So the full color is the one we call standard. So that's the polygonized data set with lots of nice colors. The second option, the plan option, is the outline style. And I'll show you these when, uh, when we come to look at the actual data. So to actually order this data, you just give it uh, uh, a name. Bear with me, and then you press the request out of button. And this launches the lodges the request for data on our system. And when it's ready, you'll get an email. The first one, I'll, uh, I'll acknowledge your receipt of your order, and the second one will be, have a link in it to download the data when it's ready for download. So obviously how long it takes to extract that data depends on how big an area you're, you've asked for data and the different formats because some take a while to process um, and how busy our servers are as well. If it's a really busy day then it can take a, a bit of time. 
Uh, but usually we say that you should get all your orders within two days, but we find in practice it's a whole lot quicker than that for most, most orders. Okay, so that uh, is ordering the actual data. Okay, the next step is to look at actually using the data, but before we do that, just wanted to run a quick poll on which um, applications that you regularly use for map data. So this is a different type of poll. You can multi-select in this one. So if I just launch this one, if you could tick all the ones that, uh, all the applications that you use for your map data from Digimap, that'd be really helpful. Um, if you use other stuff, anything that's not listed there, please tick other and let us know in the questions section. I'll close the poll now. Thank you very much for responding. Share the results. So you see we've got about 87% of people use AutoCAD, but around 38% use something, some other things as well that aren't listed there. So that's really good to know. We'll have a look at those that information and, uh, and see if we need to develop some more help resources for this. Okay. So using the data in... Uh, in CAD. We're going to do a couple of things here. The first thing is look at some of the master map data and the details in there. The second one, we'll look at the building height data, some terrain fives, and the uh, final thing will be to do a 3D visualization in Infoworks. So if I come out of here, I'm just going to open AutoCAD. So here we've got just uh, plain AutoCAD. Um, you can do this in Map 3D as well, AutoCAD Map 3D, uh, but we're just using regular AutoCAD here. and. I've already downloaded uh, that area of Edinburgh Castle offline, and I'm just going to open the file here. When you open data uh, from Digimap in AutoCAD, you will get this prompt saying it's not been produced by an Autodesk product. You're fine to open it. It's just because we use different software to create the DWG version of the data. We process it through something called FME. I'll just zoom to the extent of the data. So here we go. Here's Edinburgh Castle, left-hand side of the screen. If I zoom in, you'll see how detailed this data is. We've got the full set of the data here, so you can see all the detailed outlines around this war memorial. Um, we've got all the text, the labelling. Um, all the different features are, are included here. Now, with this data, all the attributes are stored as, uh, as X data. So if I click on the list X data, then choose a feature. All the attributes that exist in this OS master map feature uh, are displayed as X data. So here you'll see it's a building. I chose the War Memorial. It's got a calculated area because it's a polygon. It's got a version date and various other sort of feature codes and different things that distinguish it in master map. So all data in master map is attributed with a, with a bunch of things. Uh, and in the DWG version, we store that as, as X data. So yes, yeah, so it's a nice detailed data set, most detailed available across the country. I'm going to shut that version, and I'm just going to open the plan version of that. So the second version, which is the line drawing option that we call plan style. So you'll see now when this comes in, uh, it's exactly the same area. Uh, if I zoom in on that wall memorial again, you'll see it here. But now when I hover over my cursor, this is this is displaying lines. So we don't have polygons in this data set. So if I choose uh, to see the attributes attached to each of these, choose a line, you'll see we don't have an area value because this is a line, but we've still got the information to say that it's a building, what theme it's in, what version date, various of the, the different attributes that Ordnance Survey provide. So for detailed data analysis and modeling, then this is the data set that you should take. It's the most detailed that's available. Let's turn this one off. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do was to open the building height data set. So for 3D modeling, <coughs> um, we provide the Ordnance Survey building height attribute data set, which is all the buildings out of master map topography layer, but provided with their height values. Now this is a bigger data set, which is why it's taking a little bit longer to open. I'm running this webinar off a laptop. It's reasonably powerful, but it's not as powerful as a desktop, so it does take a few seconds to open. Um, here we go. So this file, just I'm just looking at my notes, it's around 27 megabytes in size, so it's, it is a significant amount of data. And we chunk this data on a 5 by 5 kilometer grid. So I've actually got more data here than I showed you in the previous two examples. Let's switch for... Uh, to catch up. So Edinburgh Castle is this little cluster of buildings just on the left-hand side here. 
Oops, jump nose to the middle. So if I zoom in on these, just to see, so you can start to see the detail. There's my hand. Okay, so here's the here's the different buildings that make up the castle. Now, if I use this uh, orbit and rotate tool, I'll move this. You'll see they come to life. We should see it in 3D now. Hopefully, you can see this. It's not too blocky or blurry. If I just keep going up, you'll actually notice that these buildings are floating in midair. So we've provided these using the height attributes from Ordnance Survey, uh, and we've actually given them a base height based on their the information from on the survey if I just scroll back to the slide that explain the different attributes so what we've done here is we've taken the base height using this abs h min value the absolute minimum height and we've taken the roof height as abs h2 because we found this gave a slightly more realistic uh, visualization if we use abs h max you get really funny um, high buildings where it's just a really tall chimney pot and things like that. So we've used the abs H2 value, so the absolute height to, of the eaves effectively in this case. So that's why these buildings are floating in midair. Um, so if, if you're going to take the building height data set, you really need to put a surface with it as well. And this brings me nicely on to the, the work that we've done to align all these data sets together. So using the insert attach option I can actually attach a surface underneath this and what I'm going to do is put the terrain 5 contours in here so for the same area I'm going to drop in the contour data set so it sits underneath the buildings now when you get the attached external reference dialog we can tick the option to say use uh, the geographic data so locate it using the geographic data so rather than having to click the right place in the screen to drop the file in, we can actually say that uh, the information where this goes in the world is stored inside this file. And when I've done that, you'll see all the options to specify on screen. So we've got the scale, the insertion point, so, so forth. They've all been taken out. Uh, so I can't actually use these. These have been grayed out. So if I hit OK, what it'll do is it'll go away and it'll read that location information, the geolocation information in the file, and you'll see it's put it in the right place. If you go back to my orbit tool, so you'll see now when I move around, you can see that the buildings are actually sitting in the right place in terms of the coordinates uh, and the contours that sit underneath that particular surface. So we did a lot of work with all our data sets to make sure that they all align correctly when you download them in DWG format. Um, previously, we had, we had issues where different data sets wouldn't align correctly, so now all the data sets are provided in British National Grid, and they all use meters as their units. So one unit in a, in a Digimap data set is one meter on the ground. So if you, if you work in millimeters or centimeters, then you need to adjust the scale that these are displayed at. Okay, the one other data set I want to show you was the VectorMap local data set. When we talked about this at the very start, I mentioned that this one was more suited for regional level um, work, or sorry, town level work. So it's, it's designed for display at around 1 to 10,000 uh, scale, and it's less detailed than master map. So if you, you've got a study area that's a larger area, then this is the product that you'd be interested in. This one is not as detailed in terms of its file size. It's around 8 megabytes in size, so it's not as big as some of the other ones we've looked at. Edinburgh Castle's this area here. If I just zoom in, you'll see that the outline of the war memorial is nowhere near as detailed as it was in master map, where it had all the, the turrets and the crenellations on it. Um, but we do have the contours and the spot heights as well. So again, it's quite a nice data set, slightly less detailed than master map, but could be useful for town level studies. Okay, so that's using some of the data in AutoCAD. I'll close that. The other thing I wanted to show you actually using the data was a model I created in InfraWorks. Now this was done really simply. There's three data sets here. We've got the Terrain 5 DTM, so the digital terrain model, which forms our surface. On top of that, I've dropped all the aerial imagery for this particular area. So we've got a, a five by five kilometer square. And on top of that, we've dropped the building heights. So the heighted buildings that we've just been looking at in, in AutoCAD. And it's all been put together in InfraWorks. Um, it's really simple to do. If I just zoom in on the castle, which is the bit we've been looking at so far today, you should see the familiar outlines. And then if I click it with the mouse and drag it, you see you start to get it in 3D. You can pan it around. 
So this is really easy. You get a really nice uh, impression of the ground. Now, what's on the ground in terms of the ground covering? We've got roads and cars visible in here. We've got the different buildings. You'll see that actually the War Memorial, which is the feature I was clicking on before to show the attributes, isn't actually uh, complete. It's not been captured and doesn't have any heighted value, so it's excluded from this. So like I was saying at the very start, this is an alpha product from Modern Survey, and it is not complete for, for everywhere, but it's a good start. Um, and you'll see obviously the inside of this building is being shown as hollow, whereas reality there is a roof on there. It's just not got a height value for that particular portion. So this is a really quick model to make in InfoWorks, um, and it's, it's a really nice way, hopefully you can see, of visualizing your data in, the, in 3D. Okay, so just to jump back to the slides, a couple of things I wanted to mention at the end. In terms of loading master map into AutoCAD, I just showed you the DWG version there, where all the attributes are stored as X data, the extended attribute data. If you need to do interrogation of that data, it's not so easy, but you can actually load GML format master map into AutoCAD. There is a template that you can download from the Autodesk website. And when you do it that way, you have more control over what comes in, what features are imported, and you can do more analysis on the attributes. We have a help page on our system that explains that process in a little bit more detail because it's slightly more involved than just dropping in the DWG. You actually have to go through a menu system and choose different options. Okay, a couple of recent developments to discuss. So uh, people that are using some of the other CAD software, we've started producing the Terrain 5 DTM also in an XYZ format, which is required for some other applications. Um, We've also standardized all of our DUGs so that they use British National Grid and they all overlay correctly. And the third bullet point there was actually released Aerial Digimap just in October. So if you want to get hold of high quality aerial imagery, um, then you can get that from the Aerial Digimap service if your institution subscribes. In terms of help resources that we've got available, there are a number of help pages that we have uh, available on the system. You can get these from the Digimap homepage. If you go to the home page, we've got a resources link top right of the interface. It says resource center there. And then down on this page, under GIS CAD resources, we've got a section that looks at AutoCAD here. And if you click on there, this will take you to all the pages we've got about um, importing data and using the data in different CAD applications. So we've got a summary page. I mentioned about importing master map from GML. Here's the help page that describes this particular process. So. Hopefully these pages will be useful. If you're not familiar with them, please do have a look. If you have any questions or, or topics that you'd like covered in help pages, please let us know because we can always develop these. We are continually uh, developing them. So that's really all I wanted to cover today. The final thing is to run one more poll um, just to find out how you, how you found it today. If you have any comments about it, please, please let us know in the questions area. We will send out a really short um, response a sort of survey response that you could be really grateful if you could fill it in so if you do have any comments or suggestions for further webinars um, please do let us know so i'll just launch this last poll um, thank you very much for attending uh, and yeah if you do have any questions we'll stick around for a few minutes and answer any that come in otherwise thanks very much for attending and you'll get an email in the next day or two with all the links that i said at the very start thank you very much